Up until this point, we've been working with our systems of linear differential equations using the differential operator and a lot of algebra to get to our solution. Well, there's actually a second way to get at our solution that's much nicer and cleaner, especially on the more complex problems. We're going to look at the question, how can matrices represent a system of differential equations. A lot of the concepts we're going to use in these next couple sections come from linear algebra. So we're going to do a quick matrix review for those that took linear algebra. And for those of you that did not take linear algebra yet, uh, this will kind of introduce some of the basic matrix, matrix operations that we're going to use in order to pull this off. We're not going to go into the theory behind the matrix operations. That's for your linear algebra instructor to cover. We're just going to do a quick overview, and then if you have any more specific questions about matrices and the linear algebra that this stuff is going to be built on, don't hesitate to set up an appointment with me and we'll take a look at it together. But first thing about a matrix, let's uh, again define what a matrix is. We've seen these before. We did them with the Ronskian, but basically a matrix is made up of rows and columns. For example, I could say this matrix A is 3, negative 2, 5, negative 1. It's two rows and two columns. It doesn't have to be a square. Matrix B could be 2, 3. What I want to notice about matrix B, because it only has one column, we're going to call this type of a matrix with only one column a vector. This is specifically a column vector. We could have a row vector, which is just one row. And one thing we can do with matrices is we can add matrices together by adding the parts together. So for example, if I've got the matrix 2, negative 3, 5, negative 1, we could add to it the matrix 4, negative 6, negative 2, 3. And to do that, we just add the corresponding parts in the matrix. So in the first row, first column, you see we've got 2 and 4. We can add those together to get 6. We've got negative 3 and negative 6. We can add those together to get negative 9. 5 and negative 2 in the bottom left corner, add those together to get 3. And negative 1 and 3 together gives you 2. And so we can add a matrix together by just adding the parts. Another thing we can do with matrices is we can do what's called the scalar multiply. A scalar multiply means we're going to multiply each element by that scalar. So a scalar is just a regular number out front, like the number 2 in front of the matrix, 3, negative 1, 4, and 6. And what that means is we're going to multiply every element of the matrix by the 2. And so 3 times 2 is 6, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 4 times 2 is 8, and 6 times 2 is 12. So scalar multiplication is pretty straightforward. The other thing that we do is we uh, can multiply matrices together. And when we multiply a matrix together, this is a little more involved, we're going to multiply each row by the column. It's essentially what we call the dot product in linear algebra. We take the dot product of the row and the column. Let's take a look at what this looks like. And this is an operation that if you want a little more practice with one of them, this is the one you want to make sure you know how to do. So we're going to take 4, 1, negative 3, 2, and I'm going to multiply it by the vector 3, negative 1. Now, scroll down and give me some more space. One thing I want to notice is there's two rows by two columns in the first matrix and two rows by one column in the second matrix. In order to multiply, those middle numbers need to match, and the outside numbers tell us the dimensions of the answer. So the answer is going to have two rows and one column in it. 
Then for the first entry that is in the first row, first column, we multiply together the first row and the first column. So we'll do 4 times 3, which is 12, and then kind of move down the list. 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. Then for this second entry, which represents the second row in the first column, we take the second row and the first column, and we multiply those together doing a dot product. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then when we simplify those together, 12 minus 1 is 11, negative 9 minus 2 is negative 11, and so our product is the vector 11, negative 11. If you want more practice with multiplication, you can always set up an appointment with me and we can look at it. The book also has several multiplication problems in it that you can practice with. But that multiplication is probably the trickiest matrix operation that we're going to work with, and it's one that we're going to use quite a bit. So you want to make sure you're comfortable with it. Now, up till now, we've only seen matrices with numbers in them, but we can have what's called a matrix valued function where the elements of the matrix are functions. So, for example, uh, we could have the matrix 2t, e to the 3t, cosine of t, natural log of t. And if we can have a matrix made up of functions, we can also take the derivative of a matrix. Of each element. So let's take the derivative of that previous example. If I were to take the derivative, let's call that matrix up above D. Its derivative D prime would be the matrix. The derivative of 2t is 2. The derivative of e to the 3t is 3e to the 3t. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of t. And the derivative of natural log is 1 over t. And so we can do the derivative of each element. All right, so that's your quick review of some vocabulary and some basic operations with matrices that are going to be helpful as this uh, chapter develops. Let's take a look, though, at how these matrices have anything to do with systems of differential equations. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at how we can represent a system with a matrix. So to begin with, let's talk about how we set this up. We're going to have x prime, which is going to represent a matrix of derivatives, is equal to p, which we're going to say is the matrix of coefficients, times x, which is the matrix of the variables, plus f. So I think I said x prime is a matrix of derivatives of x, which kind of leads us to say x is a matrix of the solutions. Maybe you might think about them as x and y, or if there's more than one, it might be x1, x2, x3, or whatever the case might be. The P is the matrix of the coefficients of x and y. And then the F is a matrix of functions added. 
So let's look at a couple examples. Let's say uh, we've got the problem x prime equals 3x minus y plus the cosine of t and y prime equals 5x minus 3y. And we want to change it to be a matrix. Well, we'll use x prime to represent the matrix containing elements of x prime, y prime. Maybe I'll put a little note below this. x prime represents the matrix x prime, y prime. And that you can't really tell because of my handwriting. That's a capital X prime, bold, whatever, to show that it is a matrix, not just the derivative of x, but that's a matrix of derivatives. But I can't really show bold very well in, you know, maybe I can make it really thick. X prime, yeah, that's a matrix. Matrices are usually bold. So we can say x prime is equal to, and then we'll do our p, our coefficient matrix. Our coefficient matrix is 3, negative 1, 5, negative 3. It's the coefficients, 3, negative 1, 5, negative 3. And then we we'll usually just say that's times x, where x is the functions, um, x of t and y of t that we've been solving for up until now using the differential operator, but we're going to start using matrices. And then at the end, we're going to say plus, and then we'll have our functions. The first function is the cosine of t, not the cotangent, the cosine of t. And there's no function added to the second one, so we'll just use 0 for its element. And so now this thing to the right is the matrix form of the system of differential equations. And then we'd be able to use some things we're going to see in the next couple videos about how to solve these differential equations. But let's do one more where we're going to practice changing the form. Let's do one that's got three equations in it. Let's call it x1 prime is equal to 2x1 minus e to the t x2 plus t squared x3 x2 prime is going to equal the natural log of t x1 plus x3. And x3 prime is going to equal t squared x2 minus the square root of t. All right, let's see how we can set this up as a matrix notation. So first we've got our capital X prime is equal to our coefficients, and we want to make sure we put them in order. We've got 2x1, negative e to the tx2, and t squared x3. For the second one, we've got the natural log of t times x1. There's no x2s, and there's one x3. For the third one, there's no x1s, but there's t squared x2s, and there's no x3s. And that can be multiplied by our x. And then finally, we're going to add our functions at the end. The first one had no independent function. The second one had none either. But the third one does have that negative square root of t. And so that goes in there. And now we've written that system as a matrix form. And we'd be ready to solve using our matrix strategies that we're going to see in the next couple videos. So that's the big thing from today's video that you need to be able to do is to be able to set up a system of equation in matrix form. But I want to take a look at where we're going with this. We're looking at finding the solutions of the matrix form. And that's what the next three videos are going to take a look at. So for example, we're going to do some work and we'll find out out what the solution is to a system of differential equations in matrix form. What I want to be able to do is test that solution, make sure it really works, so we can kind of see what we're looking for and how it works in. So there's a system of equation x prime equals 4x plus y, y prime equals negative 2x plus y, 
and we will find out in the next couple videos that it has solution x is equal to the matrix e to the 2t and negative 2 e to the 2t. Well, how we could test that is we could just plug it into this system of equations. Because if I were to write this in matrix form, I would have x prime equals the coefficients 4, 1, negative 2, 1 times my x. Well, we already know what our x is. It's e to the 2t and negative 2 e to the 2t. That's what we're going to find in the next several videos. The piece we're missing, though, is what is x prime? Well, I can just take the derivative of each of those elements. The derivative of the first entry is 2e to the 2t, and the second one is negative 4e to the 2t. So let's plug those in to our matrix form and see if it really works. So the x prime, we just found out that's 2e to the 2t, negative 4e to the 2t. We want to know, does it equal the matrix 4, 1, negative 2, 1 times x? Well, x was given to us as e to the 2t, negative 2 e to the 2t. So let's evaluate that on the right side and see if we get the same thing as the left side. When multiplying matrices, we know we're going to multiply the first row by the first column using a dot product, 4 times e to the 2t plus 1 times negative 2, which makes it a negative, 2e to the 2t. And in the second row, we'll multiply the second row by the first column. So we get negative 2e to the 2t minus 2e to the 2t. And when I simplify those, 4 minus 2 is 2, e to the 2t, and negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, e to the 2t. And we see that, yes, indeed, that does match. So we know our solution is accurate. And that finds us one solution. As you might remember from working with linear differential equations of higher order, if we have linearly independent solutions, we can go from a specific solution to a general solution. And with matrices, it works much the same way. If A and B are linearly independent, solutions, then the general solution is given by and as we found before we can take our first constant times our first solution plus a second constant times the second linearly independent solution. The only difference here now is A and B are going to represent matrices instead of just maybe an e to the 3t or a t e to the 3t or a sine t and a cosine t. So for example, we've already seen that x prime equals 4x plus y and y prime equals negative 2x plus y has a solutions. x1 is equal to e to the 2t times negative 2 e to the 2t. That's the one we just checked up above. And x2 is equal to e to the 3t and negative e to the 3t. And if you wanted to, you could check x2 up above just like we checked it here. So then we can say the general solution for all solutions to the system of equations that spans the entire space is given by 
x is equal to our first constant times the first solution, e to the 2t times negative 2 e to the 2t, plus a second constant times the second solution, e to the 3t times negative e to the 3t. And that form is what we're going to be attempting to find in our future videos for the systems of equations. For now, we're just working on setting up the matrix form and checking if a solution is in fact the solution to the system of equations. And then in our next video, we're going to start taking a look at how we can actually find those values using some concepts from linear algebra. Take a look at practicing these in your book and let me know if you have any questions.